Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Podcast Network Asia. Network Asia. This episode is brought to you by Podmetrics. Podmetrics is a podcast analytics platform that enables podcasters to see all the relevant data they need to know about their podcast's audience. Sign up now at podmetrics.co and use the referral code RESTING2XPOD. Again, the code RESTING2XPOD. What's going on? This is Xavier Woods, a.k.a. Austin Creed. I said give me the hell, yeah! Hey, this is Zayda Zay. Hello, WWE Universe in the Philippines. This is Charlotte. Talent is not sexually transmitted. You need to go back to the drawing board because your game absolutely sucks! Hey, everyone, this is Jeff Cobb. I'm Lewis Howley. I'm Sam Stoker. We are pretty deadly, and you're listening the wrestling wrestling podcast yes boy yes boy you are listening to the longest running weekly episodic filipino wrestling podcast this is the wrestling wrestling podcast Stan C, Romoran, and Chino Liao all together again on this special audio-only episode. And uh, it, it's been a huge week in wrestling. So what we're going to do is, itong audio-only episode, we're going to devote it solely to AEW and CM Punk. Okay ba yun? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take us, but I'm sure we will cover it in some form. But we might as well get it out of the way now. Para may internet. Para may catharsis. Let's save Thursday for all that SummerSlam talk. Kasi may returnees din doon, di ba? So, yeah, yeah. Sobrang, sobrang big week in wrestling. Probably the biggest week in wrestling this year. Uh, and, you know, we, we're basically eight months into 2021. So I think we can fairly say that this has been the biggest week in wrestling. So uh, we're going to get to everything related to CM Punk. And we've got a listicle in the form of a podcast uh, that comes along with it. As we feature 10 names that we want to see CM Punk in the ring with now that he's unretired. We'll get to all of that, but first we got to thank all of our patrons who joined us through SummerSlam weekend. You mga nakinood ng NXT Takeover 36 Monday morning. Thank you to everybody. And you know, if if you want to get in on all the fun, all the action that comes with being a wrestling wrestling podcast patron, all you have to do is to sign up over at patreon.com slash wrestling wrestling podcast. That's patreon.com slash wrestling wrestling podcast for as low as 250 pesos a month. You get access to the watch parties over on Discord. Grabe, sobrang saya talaga. Like we do a live chat with everybody who's part of the watch party. We also share access to you know shows like Heels starring Stephen Amell. CM Punk is also part of that show. So if you want to watch it with us and share comments, uh, you know the, the Patreon is is the place to be at. Uh, we also send over some merch. I'm sending over some face masks and limited edition Mr. C t-shirts to a couple of our new patrons who signed up for the month of August. So lahat yan, uh, can be part of your benefits as a wrestling wrestling podcast patron. So once again, it's patreon.com slash wrestling wrestling podcast. Here's a pro tip, by the way. You might want to sign up in about eight, nine days para sakto, bagong buwan, di ba? Para sulit yung bayad niyo. So there. If you want to see CM Punk's first pay-per-view appearance for AEW uh, on September 5, we'll be doing that as well. Yeah, so let's We're going to be live streaming all out together, and that will be an activity we get to enjoy as part of the Wrestling Wrestling Podcast patron community. All right. So since the banggit ng Aniro na CM Punk will be having his in-ring return at All Out, let's uh, break down our thoughts on the big return. Among the three of us, I'm, I've, I've got to say, I'm the one who probably ate the most crow because I was a big doubting Thomas. And I'm glad. I'm glad that I had to eat crow. I'm glad that I was proven wrong. The skepticism ko was not uh, justified. And that we actually had this moment. It was a huge pop. Uh, it, it was a WrestleMania main event championship level pop. <laughs> you ate a lot of crow because what did I say? What did I tell people? Uh, AEW is not set up to let people down. Tony Khan knows what he wants and knows what you want, what we want, and he what we want is you know uh, to be satisfied. And he his game plan is pretty simple: just approach the business, uh, satisfying the fans as much as you could. Uh, complete antithesis of an, uh, of uh, the WWE game plan, which is to you know emotionally torture some people in an, uh, in their fandom. Look. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Uh, and we'll talk about that more on Thursday. 
and uh, it's working for Tony Khan. It's really working because all he has to do to get people eating off the palm of his hand is to give them what they want. What a concept, no? Chino, what a concept. Yeah, well, what, what, what a concept, eh, no? <laughs> to get what you want, you just have to do something nice in return. This is such a revolutionary idea that nobody's ever thought of before. Because what's maganda dito is, first of all, I'm glad that CM Punk didn't work us like he's prone to do. <laughs> and that it was an actual comeback. And I also love that very pointed promo that he cut on Thursday. Like, I, I, I mean, I've been binge watching a bunch of CM Punk throwback content over the weekend in preparation for this return. The right? his face off with Triple H and Kevin Nash, him renegotiating the deal with Vince McMahon, and in this entire time, it's like after eight or so years, he hasn't missed a beat. Ang galing pa rin niya mag-promo, galing pa rin niya mag-slita. He still knows what the, how to say, how to get points across. It's just such, it's so good. And to read about what happened on the build-up to that, to those nine minutes uh, in the ring where he dove into the crowd and he gave everybody ice cream bars after. <laughs> So brang like I wish I was there for an ice cream bar. Same, it's a cringy yung ano yung yung tumalunsa into the crowd. Given that the Delta variant is running wild, eh, I just gotta say that. I mean, bako na dun naman Yeah, we're not all like, we're all vaccinated. Not so. like other people who <laughs> were not on SummerSlam. <laughs> right, right. So okay, uh, let's talk through our feelings. Um, I I said it nga na I ate crow, but I I'm not gonna lie. I was pretty happy to hear cult of personality blaring through an arena. For the first time since 2014, I was happy when he unveiled the new T-shirt. Uh, when, you know, uh, as Chino said, when he cut that promo, na apparently he didn't rehearse, he didn't write anything down. He was talking to Rene Paquet on oral sessions over the weekend, and he said, "Na um, when, when you're a wrestler, that never really leaves you, and that's part of your identity, at least to him. So, kait na seven years ang hindi naging part ng any wrestling company. Clearly, the bug never left him. So." I'm pretty happy. I, I was pretty happy to see that he was in a good place, as he said, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. How about you guys? Uh, the really happy thing about all of this is Punk found his passion back. Um, he found that spark back. And it's really uh, a light of hope, if you will, among all of us who are stuck in pandemic hell. Um, it goes to show that Dreams can come true. Dreams of CM Punk coming back can come true. Dreams of things coming back to us can come true. Uh, as long as the time is right. And I like that he found his passion again. I like that he lost it and he was still able to find it. The fact that he was just able to find it is really, really nice. Um, uh, I'm happy for him that he is happy. And I can't wait to see what kind of inspired wrestling he'll give us in the next few months or so. Ang ganda lang din nung uh, answer ng WWE dito. Because eh. on the other side of things, we saw two huge comebacks coming yeah. from SummerSlam. Diba? And that's just in retaliation to this one the huge comeback from CM Punk. So if if AEW ends up getting Daniel Bryan, Bryan Danielson, <laughs> for any reason whatsoever, what is the WWE going to do? You know, are they going to bring back Stone Cold? <laughs> are they, they going to retire the Undertaker? What are they going to do to answer that? They must have been like escalate siya in such ridiculous ways. That Undertaker is likely. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, the, the, the Undertaker might be likely, but I was going to say that I don't think that Becky and Brock's returns were specifically a response to CM Punk signing and debuting sa AEW. I would say na nagkataon lang lahat. I don't know. That that's just me. Because I I as as much as WWE likes to uh prop itself up as you know parang talagang the number one and there is no competition, diba? As uh, some of them have said in previous interviews, I don't know if yung Becky and Brock returns were specifically constructed as a response to Punk as opposed to more of nandito na sa point ng story nila or sa circumstances ng WWE in the case of Becky's return but we can probably break that down more on Thursday yeah yeah, yeah I, if, I know okay it, we're diverging from the point here mm-hmm. we are uh, we are so parang, ano eh, parang gets ko naman yung sabi mo I, I, 
on one hand, it is a bigger corporate decision than any of us can comprehend, diba? Kasi daming dinadaanan yan sa story process, eh, diba? Right. So, yes, but right, right. Well, my, my only other concern is, feeling ko, na-awkward na si Colt Cabana. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like how, I wonder how the backstage of AEW is like. like are they gonna get a, a CM Punk appearance of the Dark Order? I wonder how that works. I mean, we were laughing about the idea and a Braun Strowman would find his way into the AEW locker room about how that interaction with Evil Uno would be. But you're right, Colt Cabana and CM Punk, holy crap, that, that would be hilarious. Yeah, mas malala yung Colt Cabana and CM Punk umabot sa korte yun, eh, diba? Uh, they right. suit each other. So right. I wonder, I saw, I only remember this because I saw a clip the punk some behind the scenes thing where 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 Trent of all people was like, hey Colt, is CM Punk all elite? And everybody was just laughing at Colt Cabana and his misfortune. It was just <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Um let's get into the supposed reason that uh, you know CM Punk is back on TV. Now he wants to build up the younger talent and he singled out Darby Allen. So that's the feud. Um, I want to get your thoughts on this. I'll get mine out first because I'm not happy because it's Darby Allen. You know, I, I've made it clear on the podcast my feelings towards Darby Allen. He's basically the Adam Cole to my row. Like I, 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 I can't buy into Darby Allen the same way. Now row doesn't buy Adam Cole as a threat. So I'm kind of disappointed that we're getting CM Punk versus Darby Allen. But I recognize that Darby's popular and you know he is a young guy up on the rise. So sige, you know, let's have CM Punk give him the rub. Fine, tanggapin ko na lang. I'm just gonna enjoy it for Punk. That's it. How about you guys? Uh, I don't really mind. Um, I don't really have any strong feelings for Darby. I don't hate him like you do. Uh, I think he's fun when he is given the chance to be fun. So if that's who CM Punk wants, I'm sure he had a hand in picking his first opponent there. So if that's who he wants, then there must be something to it. Then it must be pretty good uh, eventually. And I want to see, I'm more interested in seeing uh, CM Punk be back in the ring after seven long years. So I want to know how that's going to be like and what his work is going to be like after that. My guess is CM Punk, being the calculated mind that he is, knows exactly who to put over. Because he mentioned Britt Baker. The first thing that came out of his mouth was Britt Baker right? in that promo. Uh, and he said yeah. it on uh, Talking to Renee that like she wanted to put uh, Britt Baker over. Because yeah, he knows that he has that power. Same goes for Darby Allen. Now, I get how you guys feel about Darby or how Stan mostly feels about our boy Darby here. Uh, but uh, I actually like how he's getting to pick somebody who's as almost as crazy as he is, probably uh, crazier. Mention Buddy Wooden to Darby, and that's what I like about him. It makes him exciting to watch, right? because he's so he looks so fragile where he does the craziest shit, <laughs> right? So that to me is is most mind blowing. However, in this scenario, I can't help but feel like si Darby and si Sting by naging heel. Because yes. how are you, diba? How are you gonna be a heel against a returning CM Punk in Chicago? So, right. if you're gonna put frame this in the traditional wrestling sense, ang labong heel lang ni Darby Chani Sting. Oh, I'll happily boo Darby and Sting. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay, because you have a bias against him. But for for uh, for fans who watch this, parang ang labo lang ng match. I don't think they're gonna boo Darby and Sting. But they aren't they? So like, essentially, this is a face versus face yeah. type setup, uh, which I'm really not a fan of. Uh, but I, I I can appreciate why he picked Darby. Yeah, uh, you know, we like we said at the top of the show, we have some other names that we want to see get involved with CM Punk in a storyline now that he's officially in AEW. But before we get into that, I just want to take a moment to recognize the fact that AEW basically said flat out on the Chiron or the lower third that. CM Punk is a pro wrestling legend. And I'm not going to argue against that at all. It's just so weird na parang we, you know, we live in a world where, where Punk is back in wrestling and you know, Punk is basically legend status na. <laughs> uh, I'm not shocked about it. I mean, the past seven years of people chanting his name in random shows, uh, it's only warranted when he's uh, a Hall of Famer waiting to be named to the Hall of Fame. So I don't really mind that. Uh, we are old. Uh, yeah. The people <laughs> we watched growing up are now legend status. Uh, we have to accept that at some point. Yeah, uh, I feel like CM Punk is on the same level 
as Stone Cold in the way that they are both disruptors in their own inter- current uh, wrestling generation. Uh-huh. Diba? Stone Cold was this fight the power guy that took it to the next level. Kasi sinapak niya talaga yung boss niya. Diba? And CM Punk essentially did the same thing because he blew the curtain wide open and showed people what actually was happening behind the scenes diba? with the pipe bomb moments that he gave us in the WWE. So I, I'm not disagreeing with that context. I'm not sure if uh, you have ibang comparison to make, but siguro in the context of my own fandom, I can probably equate this return for like yung mga, yung itong current generation of fans who might be too young to have experienced CM Punk in WWE or even CM Punk in Ring of Honor. To me, it's kind of like Mick Foley returning in 2004. Because in the time that I was getting into wrestling, I never saw Mick Foley, no idea who he was, but he returned this, this huge legend that everybody loves. I, I probably can equate it to that in the context of my own fandom. What do you guys think about that? Uh, well, not much. Because, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, it's not like that to me. It's just a, a guy that we uh, ended up getting not a lot of uh, a few years ago, seven years ago, and then he's back. This is really a long extended absence that made the heart grow fonder. Yeah, I would throw here. I can't really say for certain what Stan is talking about is it fandom niya eh. But, uh, no, no, no. I, I guess like kung ikaw, Chino, like when you were getting back into wrestling or when you were getting into wrestling as a kid, was there somebody who came back uh, into, know, I, into wrestling? I, I, I would liken it to whenever Dwayne The Rock Johnson would come out, which is ironic to say naglaban sila. But in the times when The Rock went from Rocky Maivia to uh, The Rock, as we know him now, and then back no heel pa siya and then and face turn siya and he became the most electrifying man in sports entertainment but I, I think I can liken it to that in the sense that he it, it's a it's a celestial body that enters the ring well because people gravitate towards him immediately his charisma is just so strong that it draws you in and kahit mawala sila ng matagal whenever they come back it's an instant reaction that pop in Chicago it's like a pop wherever the rock shows up. As in, so lakas. Okay, I think may uh, I think uh, I could liken it to Hulk Hogan coming back in the early 2000s. Uh, a lot of people popped for Hulk Hogan back then before he be, before we found out he was a racist. So uh, that's probably what I would equate it to. All right. Sige, sige. Uh, before we get to the list, one last shout out going out to the crying CM Punk guy. Congratulations, you are now on the same level of fan as Brock Lesnar guy, Red Cap, Fred Durst guy, yung Izzy. Umiiyak. Yung, baba, yung batang umiiyak when the Miz won. Angry, yeah, angry the... Miz girl. Yeah. <laughs> All these iconic fans. See, see Undertake, shocked Undertaker, Brock Lesnar guy. So congratulations, crying CM Punk guy. You are now in their league. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get into our list here. So we put together a list of 11 names we want to see alongside CM Punk. Or in a ri- in the ring against CM Punk, and we got to start with the AEW World Champion Kenny Omega. So Kenny Omega versus CM Punk, have we ever gotten this? I don't know. Uh, around the time uh, CM Punk was in the Indies, I don't think Kenny Omega was already that active. Ang naabuta ni Kenny kasi is si Brian Danielson, and uh, Punk joined. WWE in around 2005-2006 Kenny came after a little after that so I don't think they've met Ikaw Chino uh, I, I think uh, it was you who put this, uh, this name down so Kenny Omega versus uh, CM Punk why does this appeal to you? Yeah I mean we're talking about one of the best wrestlers ever versus one of the best wrestlers today right? so on paper it just makes a lot of sense now I'm not saying I want to put CM Punk out in the title picture just now. Because yeah, he even he said he wants to put other guys over. But this matchup just intrigues me in the context of this pure wrestling showcase. Who, what are we going to see when we get these two very talented individuals in the ring together? So I don't really think na CM Punk is like, a master technician or in tipong five star machine. Um, but I would be in it for the story because right, Kenny Omega is basically a corporate stooge right now. He's like the biggest corporate stooge in terms of the AEW universe, right? So to have CM Punk go up against him, the parang Stone Cold versus The Rock, 
you know, it um on AEW's level, that intrigues me story wise. Yeah. Uh and yeah, he's not a master technician or anything, but he is a pretty good WWE style wrestler, and that flies a lot in the business and the that main event type of wrestling. I think he and Kenny can make some magic. All right. Let's move on to the next name on our list, Bray Wyatt. So this is a big question mark because we don't know if Bray Wyatt is going to make it to AEW, but there have been a lot of rumors and whispers, especially on Twitter. So let's go to Ro first. And uh, I'm going to ask you what you think. Like, how true do you think these rumors are? How likely are we to see Bray Wyatt in AEW? Uh, There is a rumor that says that AEW is still in play for one more major acquisition. So my guess to that is Bray Wyatt and not Braun Strowman after Brian Danielson and CM Punk. So feeling ko yun Like, what other big name can you get from the market, from the free agency market? Uh, Hulk Hogan. Uh, no, I mean, like, uh, Hulk Hogan's with WWE. Ric Flair. Ric Flair, yeah, probably. Oh, yeah, that's okay. Tama, tama, Ric Flair. Uh, but, you know, as a wrestler, major acquisition, Bray Wyatt, for real. Uh, I think that uh, it's only a matter of time because if he's not going to WWE, uh, he's landing somewhere in that major network of uh, cooperating uh, wrestling companies, right? Yeah. So if uh, he goes to one, you go to them all. Right, right. Uh, I'm going to go to Chino here. And you know we've seen this before. Bray Wyatt versus CM Punk. This has happened. But when Punk and Daniel Bryan feuded against the Wyatt family in 2013, we kind of got this. And I'm pretty sure we already got Punk versus Bray Wyatt in a singles. What oh. makes it special outside WWE? I didn't know because I didn't remember the feud. Uh, <laughs> so that's my bad. That's my, my wrestling blind spot here. No, but one of my favorite Punk feuds was with The Undertaker. Because to me, before Punk played with The Undertaker's urn, it never occurred to anybody to mess with The Undertaker's urn. So it doesn't... Diba, ginagago pa niya si Paul Bearer. Diba? So parang it just, it, he was willing to cross lines that other people weren't willing to do. And he was willing to do that with this mystical, mythical um, deity of a wrestler. That, that we've come to know as the Undertaker. So, feeling go, pwede din yung dalhin yung element na yan to a character like The Fiend, di ba? Or wherever Bray Wyatt comes back as. Kasi Bray Wyatt, while he is a good promo guy and he is um, a good character wrestler, shall we say, uh, he's also, again, in the same vein uh, of The Undertaker, na very mystical, very uh, very uh, fictional in that sense. So I, I like seeing those two opposite worlds collide. I think, right. the, I think the hook there is uh, whatever evolution Wyndham is going to make after WWE, that's going to be the potential draw for CM Punk. So... I'm sure it's not going to be the Fiend character. It's going to be something else. Uh, he has more creative freedom and all of that. And uh, imagine two guys having that much creative freedom and s- crafting their own story outside of the control of WWE and Vince McMahon. So I think that's a good, uh, you know, a good dream matchup. Yeah, uh, I, I would pay to see the AEW version of the Firefly Funhouse where Bray Wyatt has complete control and can do whatever the hell he wants, say whatever he wants, and then kalaban pa niya si CM Punk. That uh, you know, I'm imagining the promos already, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm getting I'm getting excited over these. Uh, here's a matchup though that I would really really get excited about, and that's Daniel Bryan or Brian Danielson, however you want to call him, against CM Punk. And I think this writes itself because sila yung parang magkasabayan, di ba? Uh, throughout their time in the Indies, nagkataon lang na nauna si CM Punk sa WWE. But even when Brian was on the rise in WWE, people were like, wow, we've got Punk and Brian. They're both world champions. They're both in, in the main event level. And their destinies are kind of tied into one another in that if CM Punk didn't leave the way he did in 2014, we probably don't get WrestleMania at you know, WrestleMania 30. Yeah, uh, we've seen this match before so many times, but I do want to see it outside WWE. I don't think I've seen it in ROH because, yeah, as you said, Punk left first before Brian Danielson can come into vogue in ROH. So I want to see uh, the different art that they could come up with uh, outside the confines of WWE. Now that they're older, pa. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
especially after Daniel Bryan has become more seasoned in his tenure in the WWE. Right? We got the WrestleMania, we got uh, the Eco Warrior Daniel Bryan, we got all these iterations of Bryan to this day, and then we get CM Punk returning after a uh, an eight year hiatus. So to me, that just has all the makings of uh, a once in a lifetime match. All right. Next up on the list is a guy CM Punk says he has not faced, even though we know that they have met in the ring. That's John Moxley, and and you know I, I get what he's trying to say. He's never faced John Moxley, but he had to face Dean Ambrose. Ito rin, my history din sila because um, Punk mentions it himself in the oral sessions interview uh, with Rene Paquette. Na uh, he was one of the reasons why sina Moxley, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns got the call up on the main roster. So dun palang there's a story to tell already even though they've crossed over to AEW. But, you know, um, I think I said this on last Thursday's stream, this John Moxley is so different from the Dean Ambrose who interacted with CM Punk from 2012 to 2014. This, 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 this will be super fun because these guys uh, don't give a fuck. Yeah. Uh, same thing. Uh, a lot of these names, uh, right, that we mentioned are uh, kind of the same uh, purpose iteration. Uh these were people that Punk has faced before with the exception of Kenny Omega. And then uh, we're just going to do it over again in a place where they have more creative freedom. So again, this should be fun. Both good promo guys, similar styles that are in the ring. I want to see what um, they can come up with. Yeah, we're talking about uh, a John Moxley that is grittier here. That is, for me, a lot more grounded. And we're talking about the history that they share as uh, members of the Shield and CM Punk and that storyline that was in the, what, the 2015? I want to say 2015. Yeah, 2012, 2013. 2012, 2012, 2012 CM Punk. So, so to me, that makes a lot of sense uh, to see this. It sounds like we're repeating a lot of names here, but for me, I, to be able to recreate the, these matchups in an arena that is bereft of any influence from any sort of corporate entity is just ideal in situations where wrestlers get to create the best versions of the matches they want to have. They see CM Punk and see John Boxley both come from the same bitter experience in the WWE where they left with a chip on their shoulder. They left that they felt that they were wrong. So for me to see that again in a place where they actually get to showcase the best of their abilities is something that I am looking forward to. Yeah, I actually want to have them touch on the entire debut of the Shield and go into that and build off of that in their story. Because uh, that there's a lot of subtext there, and I think a lot of people will be very, very interested to dive into the uh, the inner workings of that decision, of that creative decision. Yeah, lalo na yung AEW, mahilig din silang mag-reference sa mga backstage stuff uh, or yung mga may, may pagka-work shoot vibes. And then, you know, CM Punk is the basically the mascot of the work shoot, yeah. diba? So, I see where you're going here. We're going to get to one more name, and then after that, we'll take our break for this episode. And this, this name we're talking about, I don't think has uh, he, he's faced CM Punk, but when he was coming up on the main roster in WWE, people were likening him to Punk just because of the look. And th- that's Malachi Black, diba? When Alistair Black was getting called up from NXT, they were like, yeah, this is the next coming of CM Punk. This is a guy, except he doesn't rock the boat. He's a good guy, all of that stuff. So what do you think about Malachi Black and CM Punk potentially getting into a feud? So you guys remember back when Punk debuted on the WWE roster. So they, he was doing all this uh, striking. Um, yung main style niya, Muay Thai, diba? I think like, ECW days? Yeah, ECW days. Uh. Mm. So that's probably why Aleister Black, Malachi Black was uh, likened to CM Punk because they're both strikers. And I want to see this. I, wanted, uh, I want to see them uh, parlay that into a interesting match, a hard-hitting interesting match. And uh, imagine also the stories you can tell. It's like the, the Bray Wyatt situation, that there are probably good stories you can tell with both of them here. Yeah, same. I, uh, you guys already touched on this, but uh, stylistically, they are both very similar. See him punk with his Kempo, see Malachi Black with his Muay Thai. So it's it's very it's a lot of very strike heavy 
sort of styles of fighting here that that I really want to see match up in the ring, especially since a lot of people have touted Manakai Black as the new CM Punk, the bar, the second coming of Punk. But now that the old Punk, the original variant Punk is here. <laughs> At least we get to see how each of them stacks up against each other. I just think it's hilarious if you think of yung mga lolang nanonood ng wrestling and they see Punk and they see Malakai Black. Ah, dalawang sangga no? Puro tato. <laughs> yeah, but then when they hit hard, they're gonna, they're gonna love that song. Of course, of course. So yeah, uh, we're like halfway through our list. Let's take our first break so we can let you know about how you can support the podcast through your online shopping over on Lazada. All right, guys, it's almost time for another sale. The 99 is coming up. So everything you want and need, hashtag Nasa Lazada Um, All you got to do to support the podcast is use our affiliate link. All you got to do is type in your browser, podlink.co slash EUL, podlink.co slash EUL before you add the cart and check out. And portions of your purchases will help us do what we do here on the podcast at no extra cost to you. And now a quick word from our other podcasts on Podcast Network Asia. Hey, hey you, stop, stop looking around, I'm talking to you, you with the headphones. Tell him, Migs. Are you sick and tired of running out of toilet paper? No, 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 no the, the other, other one, the other oh. one. Are you looking to satisfy your weekly geeky needs? From comic books, to movies, to video games, and anime. The show that takes you from a galaxy far, far away to infinity and beyond. Then we got you covered. We are your audio precinct for whatever pop culture case. I'm Mix. I'm Dre. And I'm Ian. This is Geek PD. Find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast fix. But who's gonna buy my toilet paper? Mix, nobody wants the toilet paper. We got we got bidets. You're a bidet. Alright, so we're halfway through our list of names that we want to see against CM Punk now that he's unretired. And I'm liking this next block of names because they're all Japanese legends in their own right. And uh, we can probably talk about them as a whole. We can sige, probably sige. group them together. Yeah, yeah, sige, sige. So, so let's bring out my guy, Minoru Suzuki. Let's bring out Kazuchika Okada, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Tetsuya Naito. So of these four... Sino kaya yung pinaka likely because I don't think CM Punk would do an NJPW trip. Now I, again, I could be wrong, but I don't think it's likely. You see, Ro already said it at the beginning of this episode. Now, once you're signed with AEW, you might as well be signed with them all because yeah, the forbidden door is wide open, diba? So I'm not saying he's gonna get Okada right away or Suzuki right away or even go to Tokyo right away. Pero we have NJPW of America now. We have that arm that's already present there and everything is opening up now. Diba si Tanahashi nga, US champion eh. uh-huh. That means he's on this part of the world. Diba? We also forgot to mention another name that I want to see just for the GTS versus GTS factor. Yes, yeah. Diba? You're right, so, you're right. My bad. So, so Kenta would also be a good name to start in there. So, pero ang sa akin lang is what once you're already past the forbidden door, what's really to stop you from oh, jumping man. over <laughs> to these other promotions, diba? It's if anything, they would want CM Punk because he's such a money draw. Yes, that's true. I'm sure they want in and out action. So, okay, among these names, among these five Puro Resu legends, I think you pinaka likely is Kenta because yeah. for one, I don't think CM Punk wants to put himself through Minoru Suzuki. I yeah. mean, you know, we, we all know how crazy Suzuki can be. So, and, and the, the Kenta story writes itself. GTS versus, versus GTS, diba? How can you drop the ball on that? Yeah, Kenta and Tanahashi are the most US-friendly uh, Japanese wrestlers, uh, the biggest Japanese wrestlers in the world. So, uh, if Punk were to do something with uh, New Japan, definitely with them. Ang, ang bagsak niya. And I want to see this happen because I want Punk to kind of push himself and see if he can hang in a completely different style. Because I don't think he's ever done this before. Um, for a lot of his career, he was mostly geared toward the WWE style. And that's why they hired him in the first place. So this is a completely different ball game. John Moxley was able to adapt to that style. And I want to see if Punk can. 
here's a question. Uh, did Chris Jericho adapt successfully? Because when he made that transition to the New Japan style, he was in his late 40s. Punk is 42. So, you know, with all his injuries, the odometer on his body, kaya ba niya? See, Jericho kasi was also in Japan before yeah. the start of his career. Yeah. So, uh, he's already had a flavor for that uh, sort of style. Right, well, right. Diba? He, he was the Lionheart. That's where he got the name from. Yes. With, with CM Punk, I don't, like you guys said it again, that he, he's a wrestler's wrestler. Diba? He's a technical. He's not very, he's not very in-ring savvy. He's more of a storyteller. So, this might be something we see a little bit later towards the end of his AEW run. Diba? Once he feels that he's had his fill with the AEW roster, this might be just an extra challenge there. A side quest, if you will, in this return to professional wrestling. Okay. Yeah, um. Aside from aside from the five names we mentioned, is there anyone else who you know um from 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 Japan who might stand out as a potential CM Punk opponent? Well, anyone who could be a potential CM Punk opponent. Like, uh, you also got the Gaijins, like Juice Robinson and. Jay I wanted White. to put Jay White on. Yeah. There. Yeah. Uh, um. Technically, the door is wide, wide open. And um, the guy Jin Saman are the, not much different from the Japanese wrestlers. So uh, anyone you want to see up there is probably a good matchup for Punk. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we talked about how the door is wide open, but I don't think it's wide open enough for Nick Gage versus CM Punk to happen. <laughs> I don't, oh, don't oh, want to oh. see this. Oh, oh, oh. I want to see it. Why? Uh, no, because you remember uh, Brock Lesnar versus CM Punk back in SummerSlam 2013. That was a really good no DQ match. And I think that uh, when given the right motivation, Punk can do a really good uh, hardcore match. And uh, if Jericho can do it with Nick Gage, Punk can do it with Nick Gage. Do you want Punk to die? No, feeding Stan. In all honesty, I think. Matay ba si Jericho? Hindi naman matay si Jericho. Hindi naman matay si Matt. Hindi naman matay si Matt Cardone, de ba? Siya Punk has a history of wrestling in death matches, de ba? He, I was watching uh uh the the breakdown episode of Siya Punk where he breaks down different wrestling movies and um. The GQ ba to? It's a GQ, yeah, on YouTube. I just, I was just again rewatching a lot of CM Punk content. So he, he talked about wrestling in one such promotion, the right? where they used light tubes. I think it was CZW, pa nga to, uh, eh, uh, to, eh, uh, Yeah, it's likely. It, it was in the in the end. Anyway, the point is when he wants to do it, he can do it. Right? He's that versatile. Of a wrestler, he was able to adapt to the WWE style, and think he can easily adapt to this style, even if it's just one match. Chaha, you gotta remember, Nick Gage can wrestle. He's not, uh, he's not a stunt, a glorified stunt. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Sorry, so Nick Gage, and this might be putting it lightly, lightly rather for Stan, but he's actually a safe death match wrestler. <laughs> see, ang naman, that is like see, the oxymorons, oxymoron. The ba? Think I say is even more. Wala naman siyang napatay. Eh. Except himself, <laughs> he almost died. He did. Eh, yeah, he did sorry, yeah, but not the other guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but not the other guy. The ba? So at, at least he doesn't have to take care of the other guy. Kaya napatay, the ba? Jeez. <laughs> Well, you know, ako priority ko first and foremost is that all of them are safe, Nick Gage included. So, um, for the health and safety of all involved, I hope that if they ever do get in the ring, that neither of them die. They're not gonna die. Nobody's died. Nobody's really. gonna die. Right? Nick okay. Gage David, survived. Okay. But David Arquette apparently was just overplaying the fact that he almost died. He wasn't really almost. <laughs> I mean, he was stabbed in the neck with a light tube. Yeah. Well. Oh, yes. Nakatawat yun. But according to Nick Gage, he don't show up at <laughs> so I mean I think if you were to wrestle in that style there was nobody better to do it than Nick Gage yeah sure, sure. I mean, Nick same way, Gage had a good match with Chris Jericho oh, he, did, he, did. he did I'll give him yeah. that but in the same way that you want to test yourself against the Japanese style with the very best why not test yourself in this style with the very best in that match wrestling sure yeah Um. I, I mean I can't imagine how that conversation would be with AJ but you know <laughs> that, that's his problem to have. All right, let's get to our last name on the list. And this one, must excited ako for this over Nick Gage. Miro versus CM Punk. What would that match look like? Uh, probably like the AEW version of Lesnar versus Punk. Um, 
I put that name in because I was running out of ideas and then I remembered Miro. Miro is so good. Miro is currently on the streak of his life. So I want to see this happen. They've never met. Uh, I want to see a homegrown WWE guy uh, make magic with CM Punk. Here's a fun fact for you. When Miro made his WWE debut, that was CM Punk's last ever WWE event. Oh, nga pala. Tama, tama. Yeah, 2014 yeah, yeah. Royal oh, Rumble. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, I, I doubt they'd ever touch on that, but it's a nice little uh, thing to look back on if ever they do get into a feud against one another. Igao Chino, any thoughts on Miro versus Punk? Yeah, no, I like I like it on paper because both of them have that WWE background. Both of them have told very good stories about Miro being the champion of God and CM Punk God's being God's favorite the, champion. Right? Yeah. Or yeah, you're on God's favorite champion and CM Punk being the best in the world. So on paper, it makes a lot of sense to me, especially since right now, it checks two of the boxes that Punk is looking for. He's looking for um, younger guys and essentially right now, since he's a face, he has to be looking for a heel. Right? What better heel right now than you know? Yeah, sure. Um, totally agree. Uh, so go to before we end the podcast, we got to take a moment to uh, possibly ruminate on the fact that this could also bring AJ Lee out of retirement. How likely is that to happen? Good guy. I was also considering asking that at the top of this podcast because AJ a, has also been absent from the wrestling world for as long as not as long. Next WrestleMania this, 31. So, it's a little bit more than your absence. 